Assalamu alaikum. I'll try to make my speech um, as quick as possible. <laughs> uh, so before I start, I just want to say how blessed we are to all be here today um, with our brothers and sisters in faith and be able to all worship God alone together. Um, we're united not because, you know, not because we are trying to be united or we want to be united. What unites us is that we all want to please God, you know. So our goal is not to be united. Our goal is to please God. And because we all share that goal, that's what makes us united. So the topic I'm going to be talking about today is guidance. Guidance. Um, so I have a lot of verses, and if I get nervous, I'll probably just look this way and read off of them. <laughs> uh, 19 slides, by the way. <laughs> I did it on purpose, though. So. <laughs> Doesn't count. Okay, so, yes. So, the first point I want to make is that all guidance comes from God. Surah 2, verse 38. We said, go down there from all of you. When guidance comes to you from me, those who follow my guidance will have no fear, nor will they grieve. God is the one that gives us the guidance. Surah 3, verse 73. And do not believe except as those who follow your religion. Say, the true guidance is God's guidance. If they claim that they have the same guidance or argue with you about your Lord, Say, all grace is in God's hand, and he bestows it upon whomever he wills. God is bounteous, omniscient. So again, all guidance comes from God. How does God guide us? That's the second question. Surah 2, verse 185. Ramadan is the month during which the Quran was revealed, providing guidance for the people, clear teachings, and the statute book. So that's really what I want to highlight in this verse, that you know, God has given us resources to guide us, right? We have the Quran, God sends messengers to us. All of these things are blessings from God because God wants to guide those who want his guidance. Quran fully detailed. Shall I seek other than God as a source of law when he has revealed to you this book fully detailed? Those who received the scripture recognize that it has been revealed from your Lord truthfully. You shall not harbor any doubt. So it's interesting because the heading of this verse is Quran fully detailed. And it starts off saying, shall I seek other than God? Because we know that, you know, we, we focus on Quran alone because we know that is from God, right? And um, a few of the other speakers made some points that I was going to make today. So I had to edit that out. Mashallah, Aaron's uh, speech yesterday was really great. Um, the messengers are sent from God. You know, we can't say that, oh, we shouldn't follow what they're saying. It's not their opinions. You know, when they're interpreting the Quran, they're not giving us some other source besides the Quran. What is the source of the Quran? It's God. What is the source of messengers? It's God, right? God didn't give us these things for no reason. Quran, the whole Quran, and nothing but the Quran. Say, whose testimony is the greatest? Say, God's. He is the witness between me and you that this Quran has been inspired to me to preach it to you and whomever it reaches. Indeed, you bear witness that there are other gods beside God. Say, I do not testify as you do. There is only one God, and I disown your idolatry. And the footnote says, this verse proclaims the Quran as the only source of religious guidance. Those who uphold additional sources, such as Hadith and Sunnah, lies attributed to the Prophet, are defined as idol idolaters. So God gives us the Quran for our guidance. How do we know if we are indeed guided? Right? Because in Surah 83, it talks about the Sajin and the Ilayin, right? And this is this is all from the Quran, right? You can be you can be getting God's message or you can be twisting things and completely getting Satan's message, right? In Surah 55, verse 2, it says, Teacher of the Quran. This is referring to God, right? So God is the one that teaches us the Quran and gives us the correct understanding from the Quran. 
Surah 56, only the sincere can understand the Quran. I swear by the positions of the stars, this is an oath. If you only knew, that is awesome. This is an honorable Quran in a protected book. None can grasp it except the sincere. And the footnote says, the insincere who are not satisfied with the Quran alone are divinely prevented from understanding the Quran. This concept is repeated throughout the Quran. Consequently, they cannot understand this verse. So to understand the Quran, we need to be sincere, right? Um, and, and one of the qualities of being sincere is um, being satisfied with the Quran alone. What does it mean to be sincere? Um, if anybody can shout out any synonyms that they have for sincere, uh, I'll repeat it into the mic if you want. Genuine, I heard genuine. Real. Real. <laughs> Pure. Pure. Truth, truthful, honest. Unbiased. Unbiased. Straightforward. Legit. <laughs> Steadfast. <laughs> hmm? Oh, persevere. Wholehearted. Okay, I'm hearing a lot of things at once. I can't keep up. Um, okay, so since Makan loves the dictionary so much, I posted the dictionary definition. Um, means free of deceit hypocrisy or falseness, earnest, genuine, real, pure, unmixed, unadul unadulterated, obsolete, I don't know, that one doesn't make sense, um, unimpaired, and then some of the synonyms, frank, candid, honest, open, guileless, unaffected, and then if we look at the antonyms, false, right? So these are some of, these are some of the things that it means to be sincere. And let's let's see what uh, verses we can find for that. So somebody said straightforward. Surah 2, verse 189. Do not beat around the bush. They ask you about the phases of the moon. Say they provide a timing device for the people and determine the time of Hajj. It is not righteous to beat around the bush. Righteousness is attained by upholding the commandments and by being straightforward. You shall observe God that you may succeed. So if your intention is, you know, to... Follow the truth, follow God, follow his commandments, and be straightforward about it. You know, he's going to give you the correct understanding. But if you're trying to satisfy your own opinions or trying to make things complicated, then they will be complicated for you. In Surah uh, 2, where it talks about the hypocrites, then there are those who say, We believe in God in the last day while they are not believers. In trying to deceive God and those who believe, they only deceive themselves without perceiving. In their minds, there is a disease. Consequently, God augments their disease. They have incurred a painful retribution for their lying. When they are told, do not commit evil, they say, but we are righteous. In fact, they are evildoers, but they do not perceive. And, and that's what's scariest about the hypocrites, right? They think that they are guided. They think they're righteous, um, but they're not, you know, and... It's very, that, that's, you know, one of the reasons we constantly have to be on, on top of ourselves and making sure, are we doing the right thing? Because, in Surah 6, verse 108, it says, Do not curse idols they set up beside God, lest they blaspheme and curse God out of ignorance. We have adorned the works of every group in their eyes. Ultimately, they return to their Lord. Then he informs them of everything they had done. Everybody out there thinks they're right. Right? But one, one quality of submitters that distinguishes us is that we're constantly trying to evaluate ourselves, reflect on ourselves, think about you know, what we're doing. We're not trying to prove ourselves right here. Right? We want to make it to heaven. We want to please God. We want to find the truth. It doesn't matter if, you know, if I'm right or if you're right. I'm wrong, you're wrong. It doesn't matter. We want to find the truth. And that's all that matters. That's what's going to help us get to heaven. Satisfying our own egos and proving ourselves right doesn't do much. Maybe it'll make us look good here in this life, but we'll have no share in the hereafter. Surah 6, verse 125. Quranic knowledge far ahead of human progress. Whomever God wills to guide, he renders his chest wide open to submission. And whomever he wills to send astray, he renders his chest intolerant and straightened, like one who climbs towards the sky. God thus places a curse upon those who refuse to believe. 
And, and this, this goes along with the other verse where it talks about, you know, tragic statement, their mind is made up. When you say your mind is made up, you don't want to listen, you don't want to hear, you just want to, you know, put your fingers in your ears, um, you're not going to be guided, right? You have to, you have to be open to, to examining yourself and examining the information. Submitters are people who examine all words and choose the best. Surah 2, verse 146. Abuse of the scripture, selective emphasis, and concealment. Those who receive the scripture recognize the truth herein as they recognize their own children, yet some of them conceal the truth knowingly. This is the truth from your Lord. Do not harbor any doubt. Each of you chooses the direction to follow. You shall race towards righteousness. Wherever you may be, God will summon you all. God is omnipotent. Uh, and Rod touched on this earlier, you know. When a submitter sees the truth, they recognize it like they recognize their own children, right? I mean, you might not recognize your, a newborn child because they all look alike, but, um, <laughs> but it, it's interesting, you know. When, when somebody is saying something that's not in line with the Quran, might sound really eloquent or it might sound, you know, okay, yeah, that maybe makes sense, but it, it won't sit right. You know, the truth will always sit right and it will satisfy all of your questions, you know, and, and God is telling us that the, the believers, they will be able to recognize the truth. So when people talk about, you know, many different truths and how do you know who's right, who's wrong, it's not about who's right, who's wrong, it's about God is right. And He'll guide those who seek the truth. So if you seek the truth, you'll get the right answer. If you care about the truth, you'll get the right answer. And, you know, it will be something straightforward. It will follow everything in the Quran. And it will be easy to distinguish from the falsehood, you know. And I just want to finish uh, with these last two verses. Surah 39, verse 28. An Arabic Quran without any ambiguity that they may be righteous. Surah 8, verse 8, For he has decreed that the truth shall prevail and the falsehood shall vanish in spite of the evildoers. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Mashallah. Okay. Thank cool. you, Serena. Mashallah.